So hey guys, this is Mike from the Pines PSM shop. Uh, finally getting around to uploading a video on our one 54 inch demo free ride project. Basically what we've done here is we've converted it into a 156 inch uh, sled, 3 inch track with all the T3 upgrades like you see on the Summit uh, T3 174 packages. So I'll take my time here and kind of go through everything that we've done to, like I said, we've done quite a, uh, quite a few modifications to this unit, to this sled. It's going to be run by one of the owners here as a, a demo sled over the next couple months up in the mountains. We're going to try a few things out on it and uh, see how we make out. So like I said, the first thing we did is we upgraded the suspension. So the front gets the RAS2 front suspension kit. So basically that's a 36 inch um, ski stance, the same as the Summit X and uh, basically gives us a couple inches smaller than what it had, what the free ride had on it from stock, the 38 inch. Uh, again, it's the RAS2 suspension, so it's a little di bit different um, geometry with it. You get better straight line tracking over the rough stuff, um, better handling in the corners, basically you don't get as much roll with it. One thing we did do is we didn't install the HP shocks that come with the kit. We stuck with the really awesome KYB Pro 40s that come on the free ride. They're an easy adjust shock, so again, you can adjust the uh, compression, the rebound really quickly on them, and same with the preload. So we wanted to stick a, with, that, uh, with that shock on this sled. We didn't want to pull those off and put the, uh, the lower grade HPGs on. Now, like I mentioned, the big change that you see here is we've gone from a 154 inch track to a 156 inch. So a couple inches longer, it's the 3 inch track. It's a TR9270 Camelplast Challenger track, so it's got a really classic lug design. Kind of a sawtooth uh, lug, it's really good in like wind blowing snow or springtime spring type snow. Uh, it's just a track that a lug design that's been around for a while. So we went ahead and installed that. Uh, fairly easy install until it come to uh, you know adjusting it at the end there and we en ended up with a little issue there and was lucky enough to sort out um, a custom component made by Avid Industries. Basically it's a two inch stretched axle. It's kind of a prototype. They don't sell a whole pile of them but we were able to source one out of the states and get it up to us and uh, take care of that issue. So like I said once we got it on the track looked good 156 in, 156 inch 3 inch lug on it and uh, just going to give us a little more traction underneath without uh, going to a 164 163 or 164 inch track. So a couple of cosmetic changes that you see going on here you can see we've got a couple of the Rasmussen style um, accessories on it the front bumper and the uh, running boards on the side so again the front bumper it's a, like I said it's a TIG welded bumper um, really strong, stronger than OEM. It's got the uh, the down tubes on it, it's gusseted, it's got a little more strength to it. <clears throat> and the big thing is when you have this bumper on, if you do take an impact in the front, um, there's a better chance that you're not going to damage that exhaust pipe up there. So again, we've got that installed with the, uh, the extreme uh, skid plate up front and we've got lots of protection going on up there. Along with the front bumper and the skid plate underneath, we do have the grip and rip chassis reinforcement kit. You've seen me, seen us put that on the shop here, on a, or put that on a few sleds at the shop here. And it's a, a nice S-module brace system that basically uh, beefs up that S-module area. And again, if you happen to hit something just a little too hard in there, there's uh, less chance of that tweaking or bending and uh, having to replace that all out. So again, just a nice little component. We've installed a few of them on machines around here, uh, especially in the rougher trails and stuff, and just going to work well. So again, on the sides here, we took a perfectly good uh, good sled and we cut the running boards right off of it. We added the Rasmussen style running boards, so they're, they're the XM narrowed inch and a half on each side. Again, they're lightweight, TIG welded, again, stronger than OEM. And the big thing about them is they, they clear the snow better than the stock ones. So they offer better traction on them. We've got the traction uh, pieces uh, installed onto them. And again, like I said, it was a fairly extensive uh, modification, a big job to it to cut those uh, running boards off the machine. But just the fact that they're going to clear snow better and they easier to tip the sled over or, or handle it with your feet, uh, it just... Uh, going to be an interesting thing to try out in the mountains.
So underneath the uh, cover here, we did play around with the clutching. Again, you know we're a big fan of the Dynamo Joe, the eye backshift uh, clutch kits. Again, this is the high elevation mount, mountain kit, uh, something that Joe spends a lot of time uh, basically testing, tuning out there. So we know they're really good kits. When they're calibrated correct, again, you get longer belt life with them. Um, you know your cruising speeds, there's better fuel mileage you can see with it. And again, quicker acceleration. That's the main reason you put uh, these clutch kits on. Really neat, like this Helix that's designed in the secondary. He really doesn't use angles. He's got everything kind of computer CAD drawn, and it is a multi-angle cam, but you can tell where he's spent the time to make sure that the angles on this cam is uh, on this Helix is just just right and uh, basically dialed in for more uh, torque, more power, so you can uh, walk away from your buddy's sled when uh, when you're on the hammer. So again, we've got that installed with the quick clickers on it so that we can uh, adjust our uh, top RPM on the fly from the bottom of the trail to the top of the trail and just wanted to make the clutch system uh, tunable and uh, easily uh, adjustable as possible on the trail. So a couple other pieces we have installed here. You can see the Dynoport uh, big volume can and pipe on it. Again, we wanted to get uh, a little more flow through the engine, so we've installed this onto it. Uh, no need for a piggyback fuel controller, uh, according to Dynoport. And we have installed a lot of their exhaust. They're really, again, high quality construction. They bolt right on. Uh, they sound nice, but they're still a uh, trail friendly exhaust. And they just they work really well. So we've gone ahead and installed the pipe and the can on that. And then we thought we'd play around if we're going to get the exhaust to breathe a little better. Let's try something on the intake side. So up by the air box, we actually took the piece uh, right in between the air boxes there uh, that's choked down and we replaced it with a piece of uh, a rubber, um, basically just kind of an experimental piece to see if we can get maybe a little bit more flow on the intake side. So this is just something we're going to try this out on the sled being it's a demo and we're going to try it out over the next uh, couple trips out there and see if we can get uh, if we notice a little more torque uh, over a stock machine uh, between the exhaust and the extra flow that we're going to see on the intake side. One more component we thought we'd play around with uh, was the venting uh, with the clutch system itself. So again you can see we've got the extreme uh, vents installed into the panel but one thing we did do, uh, we didn't want to modify the CVT cooling system. It's a really good system from BRP, but we still wanted to add some type of fan in there um, just to expel some belt dust and maybe keep the temperatures down a little lower. So we were able to tuck a little fan into the left hand footwell and again kind of direct it out the uh, side without uh, modifying the CVT cooling system. Again this is just another little experimental thing we wanted to try at the shop here and just see how it made out, see if it made a noticeable difference and uh, and just play around with it and if we've got something cool here uh, we can maybe pass it along to the customers. So yeah we've had a lot of fun uh, converting this 154 uh, inch free ride into something a little different, a 156 inch 3 inch with a kind of a T3 package theme to it. But it's time to quit looking at it in the shop. We've got to get the break in done on it. It's just heading out to the mountains here as I'm editing this video. Finally get some uh, testing and tuning done on it. And again, just stay tuned on uh, on the social media accounts on Instagram, Facebook, and again here on YouTube. And we'll keep you up to date with uh, with how we make out with all the mods and, uh, and accessories that we've uh, installed onto it. And uh, yeah, thanks again, guys, and stay tuned.